So there are lots of multiverses, actually, um, in physics. One of them is called the inflationary multiverse, which is we have a theory of um, essentially what happened before the Big Bang. If you define the Big Bang really carefully as the time when the universe was very hot and very dense, our best theory of how the universe got into that state is that there was a time before that, and it's called inflation. So the idea is the universe was, it was there, in a sense, cold and empty and expanding extremely fast. And that expansion slowed down and stopped. And the, the energy that was driving that expansion got dumped into space, heated it up, and made all the particles out of which we're made. And that's what we call the Big Bang. It's a textbook theory called inflation. It made predictions, some of which had been tested. Some incredible predictions, actually, about the way the galaxies are distributed across the sky. Because they're not just random. If you look at the galaxies, they're in sort of flows and rivers of galaxies that cross the sky in a pattern called the cosmic web. And inflation predicted that before it was seen, actually. So it's an astonishing idea. And that theory has a kind of an extension called eternal inflation, which is that the inflation essentially goes on forever. And it just stops in little patches. So you imagine this, this stretch, the fabric of the universe, space time, stretch, stretch, stretch. And then it slows down and stops in little patches. And each one of those patches is basically a big bang and a universe of which ours is one. So you end up with this sort of picture of a, an infinite fractal universe of, of, of basically an infinite number of big bangs. And that's called the inflationary multiverse. And that, that, there's some, it answers some neat questions that because it, if, if you say, why is our universe the way that it is? What, why? are the laws of nature such that life can exist, for example? Um, well, the, the answer might be that all possible combinations of all the laws of nature exist in the inflationary multiverse. So then it's not surprising there are universes that permits things like us to exist because every possible universe exists in the inflationary multiverse. That's a well-supported theory. It's a theory, so this is not the same as saying there was a Big Bang, which we know it's a theory, it's a guess, basically. But it is a theory that in its simplest form has made predictions that have sub subsequently been verified. So the old answer of what happens if you jump into a black hole is you go to the end of time. That's this pure Einstein, right? You just, so you, you get spaghettified on your way to the end of time, which means you get squat, stretched infinitely, actually, and then squashed, and, and you, so all you, you get dissociated into a train of atoms, and then everything goes to the end of time. Now, as of 2019, I would say, uh, we think that, if you think of yourself as information, let's say you burn a book. So burn a book um, and collect everything that comes out of the book all the ashes and all the gas and everything. Then in principle, you can reconstruct the book. Not in practice, right? But you can imagine if you collect every single thing and measure it, in principle, you can reconstruct the book. Information is conserved in, in all of physics. So you, if you can measure everything perfectly, you can predict what happened in the past and what's going to happen in the future. The, the old picture of black holes is that they, they seem like they destroy information. You can just kind of see it goes to the end of time and it's gone. But, and then they evaporate away and it seemed that there, there was no way, even if you gathered all the Hawking radiation that had come off for trillions of years, there's no way you could reconstruct what went in. So therefore if you jumped into a black hole you'd be erased from the universe. But that breaks pretty much every law of physics, right? Things don't erase information. They scramble it up, make it difficult to read, but they don't destroy it. But now we think, actually, you know, even black holes don't destroy information. So it turns out that now we think, and this is very 2022 papers, right? If you jumped into a black hole, then we do think that if a super being in the far future could collect every bit of Hawking radiation that was that came off the black hole, for trillions and trillions of years and stick it into a giant quantum computer, then they could reconstruct everything that fell in.